Hi, my name is Colin Overway. I'm a certified financial planner, owner of a virtual financial planning company, and for the past two years have been recognized by Investopedia as a top 100 most influential advisors in the country. The video you're about to watch is a live recording that I did through TikTok or YouTube. Just as a friendly reminder, the opinions expressed in this video are my own and not the official opinions of Advised Wealth Management or its employees. None of the information in this video should be taken as investment advice. It's very possible some of the stuff I say is inaccurate because I'm doing this live and I don't have the capacity to go back, rewatch this, and edit it. So with all that being said, I hope you enjoy the video. All right, let's pull it back up so you guys can like visually see. It's like my cell phone here. Hey, this is Zach. Hey, Zach. It's Colin. How's it going, man? I'm doing well, Colin. How are you? Doing good. Uh, you're on live here, so just wanted to make sure you're aware, so don't share any information that you don't want uh, all of crazy TikTok to know about? Sure, sure, yeah. I, I just want to say first, Colin, you know, there's a lot of BS on TikTok, and what you're doing here is so good, man. It's, I'm so glad I stumbled upon this, man. This is great, what you did. And Jim was the absolute perfect caller for you, I feel like. That was, that was something that, like, everybody should do, you know, and you're just giving it out. It was... It was awesome. So thank you for that. And thank you, Jim, for that too. Well, thank you so much, Zach, for the kind words. That honestly means so much to me. I, I can't even tell you. Um, and I agree. Jim is the man. So I think everyone is like, should just go follow Jim and we'll just like <laughs> be rooting him on along the way. I feel like I got to have him on like every six months. <laughs> well, it's, 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 it's so important to have somebody like Jim in a situation like this because I feel like if I was to just scroll past you, like down a few more, he's like Joey Bag of Donuts and he's going to tell me about how like this meme stock is the next just pump and dump and here comes the pump and all you have to do is four ninety nine. dollars he'll tell you about it. You know, it's like, nah, man, that's, that's BS. You know, I don't need that. I need to just have a job, have a pension, have a 401, maybe a Roth, maybe an IRA. And just, I'm a millionaire, you know, like Jim is a millionaire. When you, when you put up the 1.5 mil, I'm like, this guy's a millionaire. He has no idea that like, oh, it was great, man. It was great. Dude, I completely agree. Um, it's, I don't know if you've ever read the book by Dr. Stanley. It's uh, called the millionaire next door. And it talks all about how most millionaires don't spend a lot on their car they live frugally. They ne they don't spend like it has so many funny metrics. Like most millionaires don't spend more than twenty dollars on their haircut. They don't. Their average watch price is like fifty dollars. Like it is just uh, it, it's really cool. So being able to kind of connect with those people, and I feel like we're starting to kind of build that type of community. Like I want to make saving twenty percent to your four hundred one k cool. Yeah, absolutely, that's the hip thing to do. I can respect that. I don't know if it'll ever necessarily be cool, but definitely the smartest without a doubt. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what is cool is retiring early and not being stressed about money. I can agree with that, man. That sounds pretty cool to me. So, Zach, you're calling us up. Uh, where, where are you from, actually? Where, where are you calling from in the world? So, uh, I recognize a couple of your, your pictures on the stand behind you. And uh, oh. recognize the area code and things like that. So I'm I'm LA myself too. You know I recognize that coastline. Let's and, go. Uh, nice. Born and raised in the South Bay. I don't have the live up now. So if you're if you're pulling things down, I I couldn't see anything. But it looks like the PV coastline, if I'm not mistaken. And then either like the Manhattan Beach Pier or maybe a pier down in uh, in uh, Huntington Beach. Um, it's actually the, uh, Venice beach pier. I live, uh, oh, okay. I live really close to Venice beach. Oh, okay. Awesome. Nice. So yeah, that's where I'm from originally. And I got a, uh, I have a degree in kinesiology exercise science from Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Okay. I graduated three years back. I was, uh, my final quarter at Cal Poly slow was the first, was the beginning of the recession essentially. So I was the first, you know, Zoom degree they handed out 2020. I was class of 2020. And uh, then uh, since then, you know, just jumped right into the whole investing thing. You know, it was sort of the right time because interest rates were so low. And I understood that interest rates sort of drive the economy. So when everything was, was 
you know, everybody is panicking, 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 and it, and then things out they're going to lower rates. So I was like, this is it, man. Like, this is the moment I've been waiting for, you know? So I, I did pretty well for myself. You know, I went into it with about 30, and now I'm about 180. Okay. So did okay, and I put, I maxed out my Roth in the last two years, and then this year I put the six grand in there to have it in there. And my first contribution for this year was um, 500. So I was thinking to just DCA my way in, 500 a month, six grand at the end of 12 months. That makes sense to me. Because last year, I just went six grand right in January 1st. Let's go. Let's get money in there. Let's start making money. Okay. And it has lost money ever since then. I <laughs> think that was probably the worst time for me to do that, you know. But so now, and then now, of course, we have best January ever. And, but I'm, I guess my original thought on calling had to do with my Roth IRA. In my past two years, I've gone directly into a Schwab ETF that's like low, low rates, you know, and it's just the, the S&P 500 and it's Schwab's ETF that they put on the tickers like SWPXX or something. Okay. And then I'm wondering, I'm wondering, do I keep doing that or do I get a little bit in the NASDAQ, a little bit in the Dow? Do I, do I, do I buy my own stocks? Like, What's, what's the appropriate way to handle a Roth IRA? Is, is it always ETFs? Or? Good question, man. So, so let's see if I can get it kind of summarized here back to you. Um, you're investing in the Roth IRA. So we're kind of talking specifically there. But really, it sounds like these dollars are for retirement. For, they're for the long term. Like you're trying to build tax-free wealth long term. Is that right? Absolutely, yeah. Okay. So that's kind of the intention. So then the question is, how the hell should I be invested? (laughs) Like, should we be invested in individual stocks? Should we be invested in these ETF things, these mutual funds? Is that that kind of the the basic question? Essentially, yeah. But but I guess more so, is there an amount of risk in a Roth IRA that is just sort of asinine? You you don't even want to do it because the whole point of the Roth IRA is, you know, no risk. You know, it's just long term, right? You you get the money when you're going to retire, you know, and and then beyond that, what's the appropriate way to diversify? You know, I, the S and P 500. I I don't even really know how these ETFs came to be. You know, it's, it seems like it's they were just there forever. You know, and then now they got like the Russell 5000, and then the QQQ, and all these leverage ETFs and stuff, and it's it's becoming overwhelming. And I've sort of just gone to the point where the best representation of the American economy is just always going to be the S&P 500. Such a good question, Zach. I think a lot of people can relate to you in the sense that they're overwhelmed when looking at all these options. I mean, I think, I don't know if this is accurate, but I know there's a lot. I believe there are more mutual funds and ETFs than there in the United States than there actually are stocks. So like think oh, wow, that's funny. So like they're packaged up in so many different ways. They are packaged up. You can mm-hmm. buy an ETF for weed stocks. You can buy an ETF for tech stocks. You can buy an ETF for software. You can buy an ETF for so many different very niche and specific things. So what is mm-hmm. one to do when you search best ETFs on Google and you get, you know, 5 million pop-ups here. The way that I personally invest, the the way I invest is, is is I kind of share with you a little bit more of a a philosophy here is that number one, I don't know what the market's going to do. Nobody knows where the market's going to go in the short term, but we do have a belief that if you're invested globally, you're invested diversified, what you're really investing in is human civilization. And if you believe that humans are going to survive and thrive for the next 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 50 years, whatever your timeline is, then we want to be in the market. We want to be investing, especially for dollars that we can uh, of, allow to go up and down with the market. Because we, one thing we need to know for sure is that the market is not a just go straight up machine. The market is cyclical. It has expansions. It has contractions. It has you know, global events that we can't predict. 
there's world wars, there's president assass assassinations, there are uh, diseases, there are unlimited amount of scary things that we have continued to survive and thrive through for all of time. So I think if we all agree that humans are going to keep, you know, staying here and doing well, then we want to get, we want to be able to capitalize on that. We want to take advantage of that. And we created a way to do that with the market. So now with the market, you can buy pieces of the companies. You can buy and become a part owner of Apple, Google, Nike, Amazon. So now that we agree that, yes, we want to partake, how do we do this? Well, in my opinion, since we don't know which ones are going to be the best, the winners, I want to own them all. I want to own all 500 of the U.S. S&P 500 companies, but that's not where I want to stop because there's about five or 6,000 publicly traded companies in the U.S., and I want to try to own as many of those as I can. And then the thing is, though, I don't want to stop there because if you add up all of the value of publicly traded stocks in the world, the United States takes up about 55 to 60%, of course, depending on the day, uh, of global market value. So if you wanted to own all of the stocks across the world, you would actually have to own about 55% US, 45% international. So that is really where I start from a basic standpoint and that you can actually accomplish that with really, really simple tools. There's some incredible tools out there that can invest in a very similar mindset. Of course, that's not going to be buying software ETFs. That's not going to be buying weed stocks. It's not going to be buying some random strategy. There's, it's going to be either putting together a collection of some of some of the major ETFs like the S&P 500 being one, you could get one for emerging markets, you could get one for international. But quite honestly, man, there's some really great ones out there that do it all with just one stock ticker. Um, an example of that would be like VT, which is a Vanguard Total World Fund. You could do that with also things like a target date fund. And I know people are going to dog on target date funds, and I think rightfully so in some regard, because often they have high expenses. But if you look up some of these like Vanguard target date funds, which is one of the most popular out there. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I, I just don't want to get lost here and caught up on this. What's a, what's a target? I, I, don't, I don't even really understand what you're saying. Target date? Is that what you said? Yes, -A -A yes. Perfect, perfect. So uh, target date funds are going to be a lot of times they're they're an investment option within your 401k or 403b. It's a very popular option. And the reason they say mm -hmm. they have the word target in there is because they're trying to make it as simple as possible and they want you to create a target of when you're going to need the money or when you're going to retire. So for example, you might be yeah. how, how old are you, Zach? I'm 27. Perfect. So if we're going to what what age do you want to retire? ballpark i won't hold you to 28 28 <laughs> right <laughs> you're asking 20 uh, i've always had 65 in my mind okay so 27 less 65 is 38 years so we're talking about 2041 is like a, a reasonable so 27 plus 38 yeah exactly so 38 plus 2023. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Long. I, 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 I did long. less. I lessed it instead of added it. Sorry, it's 2061. So 2061. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking the math guy, right? So, uh, no, it's the year 2061. So there are target date funds that are 2060. So you could get a Vanguard target date fund, and it's going to say tar 2060 target date, and they're going to already create you automatically a globally diversified portfolio for almost nothing. Oh, wow. I didn't even know that these exist. These are cool. So this is, you, you would, you wouldn't advise, but based on education, somebody might put one of these into their Roth IRA. You could put that in your Roth IRA. And by the way, Zach, I need to disclose cause I'm not supposed to be giving out specific advice here. This is just purely mm -hmm. educational. This is not advice. I right. don't. I don't know you, so I just hope that you can. You you want to acknowledge that. 
Yeah, yeah, I just, I wanted to pull it up so I could do my own research here. Perfect, exactly it. That's for true for everyone in the chat. This is just uh, education here. We're having conversation because um, that might not be the best thing for you based on your timeline and when you need the money, et cetera. Well, I'm seeing them all here, though, man. They got 2065, 2060, 2055. This is awesome. Yep. Oh, ah, okay. So so are these going to diversify their portfolio based on what they think is going to be good by that year? Or how would these differ? I guess I could look at what's in the fund. Yeah, so if you check out what's in the fund, um, what they're basically trying to do is not make any guesses as to who the winners are going to be. So they're going to try to diversify based on how big all the companies are. So for example, Apple is the largest company in the world, so they're going to be the number one position. They're going to have the largest allocation. However, these target date funds are going to own like 9,500 companies or something wonky like that. So oh, wow. you now, by buying this one ETF, this one exchange-traded fund or mutual fund, you now own 9,500 companies at the same time. That sounds pretty good. And, and these would be international too? Because when you, when you said uh, 5545 for the, the layout of, of the international funds, you know, I didn't even think about investing internationally. I, I just, I guess I sort of had this uh, stigma in my mind of uh, keeping the money safe. I, I know this doesn't really have any logic behind it, but I just figured that there was some sort of risk in anything international. So there's risk in international. There's risk in the U.S. I mean, you witnessed it with your Roth IRA from 20, you know, in January 2022. Yeah. Uh, you know, we were down 20 percent. I mean, that you know, you got you got yeah. smacked. You got smacked pretty good. Yeah, no kidding, man. So. That is, uh, and there's definitely periods of time, uh, you know, the last 10 years, the U.S. has really outperformed international, but there are definitely decade-long periods where international has outperformed the U.S. Um, so, you know, if the, if the U.S. outperformed for the last 10 years, you know, who do you think is going to outperform for the next 10 years? I don't want to make any predictions. Yeah, exactly. I don't want to make any predictions here, but it's... Uh, pretty reasonable to say, hey, if 40% of the world economy and, and value of companies, publicly traded companies is international, it, it'd be kind of silly to um, completely ignore that. Yeah, okay. And, and speaking of this, you, you sparked my memory on something somebody once said where um, there's a, my understanding is it's an ETF similar to something, you know, like the NASDAQ or something, right? And it was, it was a Japanese ETF back in like the 80s, 90s, something like that. And it, it crashed like beyond any crash in history. And even to this day, it still hasn't come back to that level that it was in like the 80s, 90s or whatever it was. It, it, does that sound like anything familiar to you? Yeah, I mean, you're kind of just speaking to, um, what is it, the the Nikkei or uh, I, I don't know it off the top of my head. I don't take spend a ton of time watching the market to be honest because I'm globally diversified mm -hmm. and my bets are placed everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't really need to watch the market. I like to focus on the things that we can control. Um, but mm -hmm. that is completely true. The Japanese is a f market is a very famous example of how the market can be flat for a long period of time. So the U.S. Mm -hmm. could very well go into one of those periods. I think that would uh, it's, it's more unlikely. Um, especially based on how our demographic is uh, versus the Japanese market. There's a lot of uh, reasons that you can kind of point to there. Um, I mean, their debt levels are significantly higher than ours in, in comparison to GDP. There's a lot of things that you compare and point to. Um, the, the, the truth is that nobody knows. Um, so we got to stay diversified. Yeah, but I guess maybe that was sort of the thing that, that planted the the seed is out in my head to where international, you know, invest there and it's possible you'll never get it back. Whereas, you know, people always say the S&P and things. Now, of course, 2022 was rough, but I figure that'll even out in the long run. And that's guaranteed in my mind. Maybe I'm naive by thinking that, but it seems guaranteed to me. That, you know, you can certainly have uh, those, those opinions, 
Um, the, the thing is, though, is that it's uh, that that's historically making uh, <clears throat> making bets across all of the companies and in all of the countries and all the indices is uh, has proved out to be pretty mm -hmm. darn good. And if you think about emerging markets, too, I mean, think about uh, a, a billion people be having access to the Internet across, you know, over the next 10, five to 10 years across India and Africa and even uh, parts of China, like these are the emerging markets and in, in Brazil and Argentina, mm -hmm. like these people are going from poverty into middle class and they are spending and buying and sending their kids to school. And, you know, these economies are growing and uh, these target date funds or just gl or uh, global diversification with different index funds, um, they're, they're going to gain you access to uh, to capitalize on that growth. Uh, the, the, you know, they're them putting satellites and things in, in Africa and stuff, which I, I didn't even connect the dots. They, there's people that don't have internet there, and then now they're going to have access. It's like their their whole world is going to be opened up. That's that's going to be phenomenal. Exactly, and all of those, uh, you know, that that revenue is going to be captured somewhere. So um, that's, uh, I think that's kind of my idea. Um, but Zach, any other questions here? It's, I, one more thing I wanted to ask you and I wanted to leave you with it. Um, speaking of debt, what is the debt ceiling in the U.S.? And why is it all of a sudden a political issue and, a, and an issue that might affect the economy? Yeah, good question. We're going to be hearing a lot more about that in recent in the upcoming months, we actually had a very similar issue in 2011 and uh, that created quite a bit of noise as well. And actually the uh, United States, I believe our debt was downgraded from like a triple A rating to like a, um, to, to like a uh, double A rating. I mean, basically what happens is that if a uh, there's a combination of things, but basically the government is going to be running out of funds in order to to be able to maintain and fund all of the uh, programs and all of the the debt that it currently has to fund to serve. So between funding all of our social programs, funding all of the interest on our bonds, uh, that is we're, we're going to run out of money. We don't have enough uh, the ability to do that. So Congress needs to basically pass rules allowing us to uh, extend. The, the debt ceiling and be able to continue to fund the U.S. economy and all of the, the obligations that the U.S. government has. I, I personally mm. think it is a, uh, a, a clown show and it's a big waste of time that we are uh, having to, to go through all this and it's going to be a, an opportunity for Democrats to blame Republicans and Republicans to blame Democrats. And uh, mm -hmm. that is uh, that is something that is out of our control. Um, I keep right up here on one of these drawings here for my tactics with financial planning is uh, uh, two, th two, th two uh, Venn diagrams. One says things that you can control, and then the other one says that things that matter. And that's really where you should focus. And the debt ceiling is not <laughs> something that you can control. So that is not mm -hmm. something that I Absolutely. would be focused on as a... Uh, as okay. someone trying to build wealth long term. Okay, well that's good advice. I'll I'll just close out of this tab. I just know, but I'm not even going to research the 2011 debt ceiling because what you said sounds a lot easier to me. <laughs> I mean, if you want it, I don't want to discourage you from learning and and becoming you know a, a well informed citizen. But I would not make any investment decisions on that. I would not change your long term wealth building strategy. And uh, if it had to come down to you researching that versus um, trying to get your master's degree or increase your income or do something to pay off your debt quicker or do something that is actually beneficial for you personally, uh, I, I would highly recommend you to, to aim your resources there. Well said. Well said, Colin. I, I don't want to take up any more of your time, but thank you so much for this talk and thank you so much for everything you're doing. And it's the first time I saw your page, but I followed you on TikTok, followed you on Instagram, and uh, I look forward to anything else you're producing for us. Awesome. Don't be a stranger, Zach. Feel free to reach out anytime, and thanks for calling in. All right, man. Have a good one. You too. Bye-bye.